So, welcome to Write Your Own Fantasy Games for Your Microcomputer, written in 1984 by Les Howarth and Cheryl Evans, program edited by Chris Oxlade, beautiful design published by Usborne. The idea of this, of this game is you type it in, then you have an adventure, you have to go into the Dungeon of Doom, buried like beneath Castle Kraken, and retrieve the Lost Idol. There are three different programs to type in, there's a Dungeon Editor, that you build any number of dungeons you like, a character editor, and the actual game itself. It's beautifully presented throughout, lots of flowcharts and designs. This is the Book of Lore, which tells you all about the game, how you actually play it, all the characters you can choose, how you actually move, how you attack. Here's the Book of Spells. There are six different spells you can have depending on your character class, Super Zap, Sanctuary, Teleport, Power Surge, Metamorphosis, and Healing. So it's all really rather nice. So there are five different character classes, different types of weapons, uh, there's even sound and everything. So let's create a character. So the book discusses different character classes you, you might have based on their attributes, which can change. You can, might be a dwarf, you might be a thief, you might be some sort of magician with a nice lovely beard. So you load up the editor after typing it in. Here are your statistics. Strength is strength and hit points. Vitality determines your healing rate. Agility is how you well you attack. Intelligence is basically if you're clever or not. Does not use much in the game. If you've got high morality and intelligence, you're a cleric. If you increase your strength very highly, you might become a knight, who is both strong and vital, but also has high morality. And basically you can adjust these up and down. The only one you can't change is experience. You can't go below zero. I've now become a barbarian. Barbarians are very strong, have high agility, high vitality, but low morality. And no trousers, by the look of it. So you're just adjusting to how you see, see fit. Once you've finished, you press space. I'm just seeing what different characters you've got. Wanderer is the default, which is just nothing much in particular. Barbarians can use the heaviest weapons, knights can use the heaviest armour, clerics can use some spells but are limited with weapons, and magicians can use all spells but can only use daggers and can't wear armour at all apart from heavy robe. So we're just playing with this, see what we get. At the moment I'm a barbarian, oh now I'm a knight because I've increased my morality. I think I fancy being a cleric. You don't get to turn undead dead in the game, but it's nice, nice to imagine it. It's also a lot of the time it's trying to work out what, what changes what and how you become certain things. I like it's important with hitting things in defence, so I'm very, very moral. Eventually, work <laughs> out how do you actually change it. I think I think No, oh, I'm still a knight, but I'm very, very moral. I think at this point I'm looking it up in the in the source code because I've forgotten how to be a cleric. So with barbarian your strength has to be above eight and vitality and agility have to be above twelve totaled. That's it, my strength was too high. Let's pump it into agility and a bit into aura. All that's used for casting spells is like, it's like your ma mana meter. So now I'm going to buy equipment, all sorts of swords, weapons, and armor. You get a little gold coins. Except I can't buy a, a, any, any edge weapons at all because I'm a cleric. So I'll have a mace and a flail. I can't have a dagger. But I'll have a gauntlet in case I want to punch somebody. And let's have some armour. I can't have heavy armour, unfortunately, because I'm, I'm a cleric. But I can have some chain mail. Have some leather. Let's have everything. Let's have some robes. I'm not allowed a gold helmet. But I can have a headpiece and a shield. A torch. You use torch in the dungeon to show light. Then we need to magic, buy magic. The Necronomicon is to use the heaviest and most powerful spells. I can't have it because I'm a priest. I can have the scrolls, though. The other magic items don't do much. There's an option to change the game to make them more useful. 
and you can buy healing salves and potions. Finally, you need to name a character. The default game is up to 10 characters. I changed to be 12, just have a little bit more, and then spent some time trying to work out A how to type in properly and get some decent name. Um, unfortunately, all these names are too long. So, in the game itself, Necronomicon lets you use spells 1 to 3, scrolls, spells 4 to 6. There is a suggestion in the game to expand it to actually make all the magic items, Necronomicon, scrolls, ring, amulet, sash and cloak, do something. Um, so you can actually say, no, no, you can't cast um, Metamorphosis unless you have the Mystic Amulet, for example. Which is nice, it, lets you t it tells you how to change things and gives you an idea of creating new monsters, adding passwords, adding new torches, um, adding magic barriers, so morality is actually useful. Um, so you, know, you can't go past this, you're particularly holy. And I'm scratching my head thinking, what should I call this amazingly strong moral character? Thinking, you know, what sort of a churchman is tough? Oh yes, the bishop from Monty Python, that'll do. I'm save, save it to tape. Possibly twice, because I forgot to start the emulator. And then, we're going to design a dungeon. So, after typing in the dungeon editor, it's now time to create the dungeon. We started the castle ruins, which is all very pretty, but then we really need to design the first level. The book describes level one as being the easiest to survive in. You might find there treasure chests and goblins and such like. So, you load up the dungeon editor, and you have a nice little editor here. I've sped up the playback. H for help. The black door is the entrance. The white door is the exit. You've got to get from one to the other. You can't exit the level until you've got enough experience points. So let's put some walls in the way so you can't just walk there. So basically you put one for wall. Nine is a monster. And when you put a monster down it randomly chooses one of the three monster types. The little circle is a safe space. So it's has some more monsters and some treasure. The little pot is a magic potion. Which we can use for healing. You can't leave the, dun the dungeon until you've got uh, this level one until you've got two experience points. You gain one point one from attacking a monster. So I put lots of monsters in. The square looking things are traps. Some of the dots might be wrong. Um, so you get stuck in a trap and you can't move unless your strength is greater than 80% of normal and you're lucky. So you can get stuck there. If you keep moving, you'll probably die. Or you can use a potion, or you can just wait. But if you're waiting, attack by monster, that's a bit more of a challenge. So the first room is have a little monster. Then there's the next room, there's a trap there, a monster. See, a little bit of treasure to lure you in. So, you know, a couple of varieties variety of routes to the dungeon. Some happy little monsters. Yeah, that'll do. Let's save level one. Save to tape. On to level two. So level two is meant to be tougher. You have better, better rewards like gold coins and diamonds, but you also have skeletons and deadly snakes. So. Because we entered the dungeon top left, let's put it top right. So that's the exit, that's the entrance. So we come in the, bo the bottom, and let's make this one a bit more of a maze. Narrow, narrow corridors, safe spaces, and traps. Make like it a bit more annoying, a bit more, a bit more windy. So level one was fairly open. You wind around, lots of rooms. Let's make it a little bit more tricky. So because it's a basic program. The key presses are a bit insensitive. As when you hold the button down, and say, "Oh, you've pressed the button once or twice," which is why I don't speed up the emulator because otherwise it becomes uncontrollable. More treasures, more potions, more salves. When you pick up a po one of those potion pots, you get a healing salve and a healing potion at the same time. Like a double bonus, which is nice. The 
keys for this are slightly odd. A's, A is A is up, Z is down. B and M, I believe, are left and right. The problem with that is um, A is next to S, and S is for save. So at some point in this level, I make a mistake. I've, ne I've, I've just about finished it, and then press save slightly earlier. When you, when you complete the game, you get points for, for tre treasure you carry, carry, because the villagers let you keep the treasure. Oh, I press save by accident. That's why the top half of the level is empty. Level three, we might find dragons and evil sorcerers, but also magic potions, magic swords, and piles of jewels. So let's put the exit there. Now that funny thing looking like an odd man is actually the sacred idol which is, the, your, it is your quest to collect. Once you pick up the idol you win the game. So put it in a nice room next to a trap, a couple of traps. And let's have some treasure, a nice bit of treasure and a monster with some kind of UFO and legs. Space Invaders. What should we do here? Nice windy windy maze. Oh no. Of course, I don't want to put a monster there. But so it lets you override whatever you put with something else, which is fine. Uh, if you want to delete, you just press zero and it puts a, a blank space there instead. A little safe space. When you're in a safe space, you can't be attacked by monsters, so you can just sit there patiently and just heal. You do heal over time. That's based on your vitality. When you're in the dungeon, you only discover what's on the square by moving into the square. So if there's a trap there, you just blunder right into it. Unless you've used the reveal option, which uses uses some of your light, which does actually reveal traps, so you can avoid them. Probably they're like pit traps. You've walked into holes. And it just doesn't make a huge amount of sense. But also, if, if you reveal a monster, they don't always become active because only one monster at a time is active. Obviously, that means you can't attack them, which is a bit odd. But it was a very basic game. So. A bit of treasure, a bit, bit more potions. Invader Man. And a few traps. That's the UFO and legs. Ah, that looks pretty good. And let's save that to tape. You can keep going. Uh, you can basically have as many. I think it says that up to five levels. I do have level four if I wanted to. But. I think that's enough. Thank you. So, the next video will be looking at actually playing the game. Thank you. Goodbye.